Good morning. I'm glad you're, you're able to take some time to do it, to worship. I hope that worship will be in person next week, as uh, you may have noticed, it was a little bit cold this weekend, at least in Missouri. Uh, usually when I record a sermon, I would record it in the sanctuary. However, with it being this bitterly cold, it just didn't seem to make sense to me to heat up the entire sanctuary uh, for 20 minutes for, for this. So I'm going to record in my office, which is nice and toasty due to my little space heater over here. Uh, what will be in person is this Wednesday. Uh, we will be gathering for Ash Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the Shalbina Methodist Church. And so I hope you're able to be there for that brief service at a time when we begin uh, the season of Lent together. So the reading this day comes from uh, Paul's letter to the church at Thessalonica, the third chapter. So when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens, and we sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service in spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted, and it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our laborers might have been in vain. But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Therefore, Brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. For now we really live, since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day, we pray most earnestly that we might see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. This is the word of a God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have a journal that I have been writing in uh, for four years now, and, and what this is, uh, letters from dad. This, these are the, the letters that I'm writing for my children, and it's letters to them uh, to be read when grown up. That, that's the, that's my, well, the task I've set for myself as I write in this. And I don't write in it all the time, but I write in it when uh, there's something of import that happens, when there's something that I think I uh, have something to say. That, uh, yeah. Um, this week, when I, I glanced down at this, um, I saw that phrase, to be read when grown up. And I thought, I should let them know. What do, what do I mean by that? Like, when I say grown up, what do, I, what do I mean by saying when someone is grown up? Like, I, I don't have a specific age in mind when I will give this book to them. To read, I just, it's when they're grown up. What, 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 what does that mean? To me, my understanding of grown up is when a person begins to act for the common good. When someone is looking at a family, community, church, nation, and acting for the good of more than just yourself. That, that to me, is the, 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 the line. Right? When, when you're doing that, that's, that's being grown up. And, uh, I ended this missive to them, this letter, this week, uh, with t by telling them that I'm looking forward to seeing what they do when they grow up, when they begin to serve others, because I don't know what they're going to do. Like, I, I truly don't. I mean, that's the, the, the excitement, the joy of raising children, is how are they going to turn out? What are they going to do? How are they going to take all, all the things that you see in them when they're young? How are they going to take that? And what are they going to do with it? I, I am excited to see. 
And I'd ask you to think about that as well. Who are you excited to see what's in their future? Uh, obviously, children, grandchildren, that's what comes to mind easiest. You're excited to see what, what's going to happen with family members, what they'll do. But is there anyone else? Like, who are you excited to see? Who do you look at and say, man, there's, there's something in that person's future and it's going to be good. I can't wait, All right? I invite you to turn with me to, with, to look at Paul today as Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica. And, and I think we're going to find him to be excited in that way, that excitement about what, what happens next. Right. What uh, When we first pick up in, in this third chapter of the letter, we, we don't find excitement yet. What we find is worry and concern. Like Paul does not, ha does not have any like British stiff upper lip, you know, just stiff upper lip, just kind of getting through something. No, he, he just tells them, I am worried about you. And, and when I was so worried about you, I couldn't stand it anymore. I sent Timothy to you so I could make sure that you had not fallen in the trials and temptations that I told you you would face and you knew you would face and, and, and I'm sure you had faced them and, and I, we just, I sent Timothy to you to find out about this. And uh, that's quite the journey too. If you look up the, 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 how long it takes to get from Athens to Thessalonica, that's 86 hours according to Google Maps, uh, walking on modern roads without stopping. So like, this is probably the better part of a month to walk that and then uh, see, and then uh, come back, it'd be another chunk of a month, right? So this is quite the journey that Timothy has undertaken uh, for Paul. And so when Paul uh, hears Timothy's report, Paul just rejoices, right? Paul is just excited. God, Paul is excited to hear the good news of their faith, their continued uh, thankfulness for what Paul had taught them. He is glad to hear that they still want him to come up and show up again, right? Paul has been worried that uh, they, they wouldn't want him to show up again, that he had given them this good news, like the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and that uh, because they had taken some heat over it, that they might not want him to come back. And so the news that uh, they had remained faithful and true to this, that they had continued to find following Jesus to be good news, and that they were excited to see him in the same way that he was excited to see them, like he, Paul is just very deeply thankful. He exclaims that he can now really live, for he knows uh, that they are doing well. He is deeply thankful and he wants them to know about it, and he, he moves on to this next section with this, this fascinating sentence. He, he says to them, he writes to them, Night and day we pray, Paul and Timothy, we, uh, we pray that we might see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. That's a pretty impressive pivot there, right? It's important to recognize what's happening here. He is pivoting from being really excited for what they have done, really excited for the travails they've, they, they've gone through and, and not lost the faith in the midst of, the way that their, their faith in Jesus has sustained them. He is excited for, for the community that still binds them together. He is just very deeply thankful that for all that has happened in, in their lives. And he wants to then supply what is lacking in their faith so that they, they can turn towards the future because there's more to do, there's more to learn, there's more to grow, right? He wants to supply what, what is lacking. Um, listen to all, what Paul then writes. Like, this is how he wraps up the third chapter, and this sort of wraps up the first half of his letter to Thessalonica. After this uh, comes some practical commentary, which we'll turn to next week. But this is sort of the high point, of the, the apex of the first part of, of, the, of the book. He writes to them, he says, Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all of his holy. What Paul is writing for them at the end is this like benediction. It's this prayer. It's his deepest desires offered to them and to God 
uh, this is what he hopes and he desires for them. This is what he is thinking of as he's thinking about uh, supplying what is lacking in their faith, that, that the family might be reunited, that he might be brought back together with them. And that what comes next, that it might come out of the grace of God overflowing so that you would love each other more, he says this to the Thessalonians, the people of Thessalonica, so that you might love each other more and that that love might even overflow outside of the church, that you might love others outside of the church in this this exciting and grace-filled way. And, And that you would do that just as our love overflows for you. Like, again, this, back to that imitation thing. Like, the way that you have watched our love overflow for you, that's what we're talking about. Or your love overflowing for others. That, that you might know and experience that you are so loved by God. And you might know and experience how you have been loved by us. And so that now it might overflow onto each other and, and out into the world. And so how long does Paul pray for this to continue? Like, what's Paul's timeline on this? Right? When is your faith complete, you might say? What is lacking in your faith? What is, la- what is Our faith is complete. Our faith is completed. Uh, when, as Paul puts it, we stand before our Lord Jesus Christ blameless. But that, that's the so that. We do this so that we might stand before. We, we, we love each other. We pour out the love that is poured out to us. We pour out to others so that we might stand before Jesus holy and, and blameless. That, that's the goal that Paul is driving towards. And, and it, it's a lifetime journey that Paul is, is laying out here. And, and so Paul, we read this and we just see that Paul is just so excited for them, right? For what they have done but just as much for what they're going to do next. Like, you are going to love each other, and you're going to love others outside the church in ways that are going to be surprising and exciting, and this is just wonderful, right? This is so very cool, that what's happening here. And this is such a powerful way to talk to people about what's next, right? If Paul is going to, is helping people change their lives, and he's not doing it by haranguing or, or, or berating or challenging them or any way, right? And, and we know, like we, we know how that works. We know that if someone comes, to, if someone comes to me, if a, if a person comes to me and tries to get me to change by by uh, hitting me with shoulds and oughts, and you should do this or you ought to do that, you know what? I got plenty of shoulds and oughts in my life. Like that's not going to do much to me. Right? You, you can keep your shoulds and oughts to yourself, thank you very much. But if someone comes to me as a, and is excited, that's a different matter. That's a different matter altogether. Like someone comes to me and they're excited about what has happened, what I've done before, and they're excited about what we can do together next. You know, you got my attention. Like I, let's do this, right? And that's how Paul is approaching them. Paul's approaching them uh, with seeing the, their potentials and possibilities, celebrating what they have done, and looking to the future and saying, and it's only going to get better. Like, you can do so much more as you, you are filled up with the love of Jesus, and, and as you continue to be able to share that with others, whether they're people close to you or people who are not close to you. You're going to love people, and this is very exciting. Right? This is very cool. Right? The people who come to us, like Paul came to the church at Thessalonica, they are angels in the truest sense of the word. An angel is someone who brings good news that is of God. And that truly is good news when someone can come to us and say, I'm excited for what you're going to do next because God is powerful and and we're going to follow God and it's going to be good. And so let me answer that question I had for you at the beginning. I asked you, who are you excited for? I, yeah, we all get excited about our children and our grandchildren and the nieces and the nephews and our, our family, and that, that's a very good thing. But who else are we excited for? And, and I want to tell you that I'm excited for you. I'm talking to you. Like you, the person watching this video, I'm excited for you. Because whether you are a part of the, one of the churches I serve, Shelbina or Honeywell Methodist Church, or, or whether uh, I know you from some other way, like I know you in some way, and I'm excited for you, that you are capable in following Jesus of loving others in new and exciting ways. I don't know what those ways are. I can't wait to find out. I, it's very cool what you are going to do next. I am excited for 
you. And, and moreover, I'd like to invite you to be excited for each other. I'd like to invite you uh, to be excited for each other in the same way that we are excited for our children and our grandchildren, for the people in our families. Right? How would that change our church, our respective churches, whether it's Shelbina and Honeywell or uh, the, other, the church that, that you attend? If when you were there, you were excited, you looked at the other people and you were excited and saw them as people that God is working through and that together, man, you're going to do some things, right? How would that change things? That's how I'm excited for us. Now, I want to invite you to uh, join with me in something I am excited about that we, we can do together. And we can do together no matter where you are uh, due to the joys of, of, of technology. Uh, we begin Ash Wednesday this Wednesday. Uh, and it is the beginning of the journey that we take Lent, the journey 40 days that gets us from here to Easter. Now, traditionally, the invitation for Lent is to fast and feast. That we fast on something that uh, we need to let go of or move on from. So that we might feast on something that is good and joyous and bring us close, closer to God and to each other. And, and I, fasting tends to be the thing that gets more attention. Like, what are you going to give up for Lent? And, you know, I, I, over the years, I've tried to make sure, I've tried to really focus on both, that we need to fast and feast. And, and this year of all years, I, I think I'm not even going to talk about the fasting because, man, it's been a year. I don't want to invite you to fast from anything because, really, it's just been a hard year in general. I want to invite you to feast on something with me. I want to invite you to feast on prayer together. And I want to give you a tool to use to make it uh, make this e easier to, to do. What uh, the, the Methodist Church here has procured are these uh, field guides for daily prayer. Uh, what is in these is nothing new. Uh, what is in these, uh, in, in the larger or smaller format, and with this different size print, is um, morning and evening prayer, prayers for various times, the 30-day reading of the Psalms, right? And so this is how Christians have prayed for centuries, right? This is the prayers of the church. And so I want to invite you to, to join with me spending this next season, this time between now and Easter, praying morning and evening prayer together as a church. Now, to, to help model what this looks like, on Wednesdays at noon, I will be live on Facebook I'll, I'll figure out the details of how that works between now and Wednesday. It can't be that hard. Uh, I, uh, but on Wednesdays at noon, I will stream. I will be live on Facebook. And I'll be in the sanctuary of the Methodist Church here. And, and I'll do evening prayer. And so you can sort of start hearing the rhythm and the cadence of this. And if you'd like to join me in person, you're welcome to do so. Slap on your mask. Come on down. And, uh, yeah. Now, uh, I'll have these to hand out uh, at Ash Wednesday and on Sunday. And um, if you'd like one, I can ship one to you. Or you can go to uh, Seedbed, uh, seedbed.com, and you can order one for yourself. But, but that's something I'm excited for us to be doing together uh, and, and knowing that uh, we're going to be starting up some things in the coming months as uh, as people are more and more vaccinated, as we're, we're turning the corner on, on this pandemic, uh, we're going to be able to start some things again. And I'm excited for that. I'm excited for what we're going to do together. And, and I am certain that what we do is, is going to be, uh, it will go far better in as much as we are grounded in, in prayer together as a church, as a community. My friends, I am thankful for who you are. I am thankful for what you have done. And joining with Paul and how he explains it, I'm excited for what comes next. I'm excited for the ways that as we turn to Jesus, that that, that love and that grace he has for us will overflow in, into our lives and out of our lives so that we find new, deeper, more nuanced, interesting ways to love each other and to love others outside of the church so that we might walk through this life 
and in the end stand together holy and blameless before Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to pray with me. Lord, thank you for bringing us to this day through whatever, whatever journeys we have taken to get here. Thank you for bringing us together, for giving us the gift of a people to journey with. We pray that you would fill us with your love. Lord, that it might overflow into all of those around us, such that our faith might be made complete. Guide us through the days to come that we might journey towards you in that, that, in that time when by your grace we stand before you blameless. We pray that we might be filled with excitement for each other, expectation for what you will do, and, and a fulfilled hope. All right. In these days of cold, we pray that you would help and preserve those who are out in the weather, especially those who are out in the weather, to serve, to protect. We give you thanks for the will, their willingness to serve this day, every day. We pray for all these things as we pray in the name of your Son our, and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace and the joy of our Lord Jesus Christ sustain you. May you be excited for each other, turning to the future, looking forward to what God is going to do in your life and in the lives of people who follow Jesus together. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.